Hi, my name is Amber Kerr Allison. I am a PEMC graduate from the year 2008, which was the first year that PEMC was actually put together. I am a student who graduated from the Art Conservation um, at the University of Delaware through the Winter University of Delaware program. I went, uh, my third year interview, um, third year internship, excuse me, was at the Smithsonian American Art Museum at Lunder Conservation Center, which is a visible conservation lab, visible in the sense that the conservators actually work behind glass walls so the public can observe what we do when we're caring for the collections of the museum. And during my third year um, internship in graduate school, I was introduced to the PEMC program and applied for it and was really interested in actually attending PEMC to learn more about the different ways in which I could convey what conservation is to the general public. And being a visible conservation lab, the importance of that and finding different ways, especially through new media, of how we could engage with the public and sort of get the message out there about what conservation was. I was really um, excited to get into PEMC and to be able to spend two weeks in the program. I didn't do the full summer, I just did the two week session. Uh, but during those two weeks, we were initially introduced sort of the general ideas of problem-based learning, looking at objects, talking about objects, and then we moved into new media. And more specifically, it was the first time I'd ever really been exposed to any source of social networking at all. I had never prior to that had a Facebook account or even knew really what Twitter was or had even really read very many blogs. So this was a whole new introduction for me. And as, this was only a couple of years ago. Um, but being a part of PEMC, one of the first things we had to do was actually set up our own Facebook accounts. Uh, I was very hesitant. I had heard about Facebook. I knew it was out there, but it was a little intimidating. Um, but I went ahead and I set up a personal page, but I felt that I wasn't quite ready to sort of dive into social media entirely on a personal level. Uh, so my Facebook page, though it had some personal information, I was a little uh, hesitant to divulge too much about myself, so I kept it very general. Um, and I really found much more of an interest of posting about the things that I liked. So I was more comfortable just posting articles um, that I would find about conservation or what was going on in the world of conservation, which is my passion. And so I would share these articles with people who would become my friends, uh, both professional friends and family and other friends. And I found that as I was doing this, more and more people were becoming fascinated with the field of conservation. And I actually was approached by a conservator in another museum who asked me where I was finding all of my data. Well, the other side to what PEMC taught me is to go out there and to sort of mine for information. And I actually set up a Google account uh, with key searches. So every day, Google supplies me with a wonderful array of blogs and postings about the world of conservation. And that's where I get the majority of my information that I then repost onto Facebook. And then I learned how to use Twitter. And I use Twitter as a way of just sort of feeding that information out to a totally different audience and in a different way. And when we came, when we finished with the two weeks at PEMC, I went back to the London Conservation Center and we were looking for new ways of engaging the public. And so we talked about setting up a Facebook page. And we did. And at that time we actually had a program coordinator who set the Facebook page up. But we wanted to be a little different in how we used Facebook, not just to as I was posting articles about conservation, though that was one of the things we wanted to achieve. But we also thought, well, why don't we start creating photo albums about the projects that we do and the things um, that we're treating in the lab so that people could follow them? Because a lot of our audiences come and they see us working on these objects, but then they go back to wherever they're from, somewhere in the United States or around the world. And this is a way that they can actually keep up with a project to see how it's progressing. They can see the treatment photographs that we take. They can look at the analysis that we're doing to learn more about the artifact and the materials involved with it and they have a reference point that they can keep going back to and then seeing the full progress of it. So that was one of the ways in which we started to use uh, the Facebook page for the Lunder Conservation Center. The other thing that we did is uh, we had a particular challenge. Uh, our labs are located in a remote section of the museum, sort of up in a corner. And if people didn't know we existed, they'd have to come searching for us and sort of try and find us on the map, if you will, which can be fun, but also is difficult when you really want to start getting uh, your audience up to see what you do. And so we thought about ways of uh, conveying when we would be working in the glass um, for them to come and see us, to sort of promote them, because there were other times that they were coming up to the Lunder Conservation Center 
Center and they wouldn't see a conservator working. And it was sort of, everyone jokes, you know, sort of like, well, isn't it feeding time? You know, where are the conservators? How come we can't see them working at their benches? And trying to convey that only a small portion of our time, maybe a third of it to 45% of what we do is actually what we call bench work where we're sitting there at the lab, at the easel in my case, because I'm a paintings conservator, um, where they could actually see us working on an object. The other times we're writing reports, we're doing research, we're taking photographs, or we're out in the galleries or in an off-site facility. So we had this challenge, and we thought to ourselves, well, if there was a way that we could somehow convey in real time when we were going to be actually at the easel, that would be fabulous. And one of our new media people mentioned Twitter, and we all sort of bounced around this idea, well, what if we use Twitter as a way of communicating with our information desks? And we are paired with the Luce Foundation Center for Visible Storage uh, in the same facility, the area of the museum that we're in, the Lender Conservation Center. And so we communicate through Twitter. When I sit down to work at the easel, I will take just 10, 20 seconds to sit down, type a brief statement about what I'm doing, paintings conservator, fourth floor lab, cleaning such and such painting, and I'll put a link to that painting in our digital site. And I actually use the tiny URL site to make it a small URL so that it can actually go up into a Twitter, a tweet, if you will, and, um, and not take up too many characters. So I will link it to our digital uh, information that the museum has online for people to actually go to the painting, learn more about it, learn more about the artist, see a picture of it, and then maybe entice them to come up, either come to the museum to see it going on, if the treatment is something that's ongoing, or in real time, those tweets actually go to our information desks, they now see that there's somebody sitting at an easel and they can convey it to the public in real time that, hey, if you go up right now to the Lunder Conservation Center, you're going to see this paintings conservator working on a painting. So there's where the social media, I still uh, use my social media sites of Twitter and Facebook to convey the things that personally are of interest to me certain projects that I read about um, or find out through my Google search. Um, I'll post those almost a daily basis. And then I'll share also those same postings on the Lunder Conservation Facebook page, as well as some other professional pages, because now all of a sudden I have been asked to be an administrator on several Facebook pages. And that's wonderful because you do it sort of uh, for someone else. So one of the pages that I uh, am an administrator for is the uh, International Institute for Conservation, IIC. And this IIC page is something I set up a year ago, uh, actually through Joyce Hill Stoner, um, introduced me to uh, some of the key people in this organization and said, this is a person who's using Facebook rather in interestingly, we should have her doing this for IIC. And so Joyce and I initially started together, but now I pretty much do most of the postings that go up there and we'll get information from other people and post those up. But again, it's these just these articles about conservation but within one year we now have close to 7,000 followers um, and that's very exciting because that means there are 7,000 individuals out there following these posts commenting about them there are some challenges I really thought with the interest that some people would have that sometimes we could get these discussion groups going about conservation uh, especially more recently when uh, Egypt had its revolution if you will um, and there were people who were arm in arm protecting the museum in Cairo. And we started to try to have a discussion group on Facebook on this IIC page, thinking, wow, people are really gonna light up, they're really gonna talk about it. Well, you, you know, you have to be kind of careful because you never know how these different forms of social media are really gonna work or not work. And in that case, I was really surprised that no one was really talking about it. No one really wanted to to throw in their opinion into this hot topic that was going on right now live in the world. They were much more pacifist in that they just wanted to read about it. Now, anytime that I posted an article about Cairo and what was happening with the museums, I could see that there were many people who were not only reading that article through the IIC page, but they were also sharing it. So they were taking that information, taking these articles we were posting, putting them on their Facebook pages or other Facebook pages, but no one would talk about them. So it's interesting how different forms of social media can be used by different people. You know, there are those who just want to just information and to learn something, and then there may be other areas where they're more engaging, like say a blog perhaps, where you post information. Now we've, um, we've done a few blogs at the Lunder Conservation Center through the museum's uh, main blog site, which is called iLevel, and they've gotten some great response. 
and you get sort of leads through there. But I'm not a big blogger myself, I have to confess. I think one of the things that's really important is that you choose a social media that you're comfortable with, that fits your personality, if you will, and is something that you're willing to commit to because it is a commitment and once you make that choice to convey your information in a certain format you really have to be consistent with it. Uh, I've done a couple of workshops uh, for public scholarship and one of the things that I tried to convey to the people who attended the workshops is that it's real important that you have this contract with your audience once you set up this social networking site. Um, whichever avenue you choose, whether it's through blogging or Facebook or Twitter, um, that you once you start to get these followers, they're going to be interested in what you have to say and they're going to be following you, they're going to be investing their time, they're coming to your site to read what you have to say or what you're conveying to them. And if you break that contract by not being consistent, by being haphazard in the way that you communicate information or that you're really intense with it at first and then you start falling off and being inconsistent in the way that you post, you start to lose your audience. You start to lose those people who are really giving you their time and their interest. And so making sure you choose that proper avenue I think is a real important one.